Hey guys, and welcome into Anno 1800. In this little guide video I'm making here, we're going to talk about production chains and you, how they work with your economy, how to keep your economy balanced while you're making production chains, and how not to overbuild. So we're going to go over production chains, how they work, what are they, how to read the information provided with them. We're going to talk about interactivity between production chains. Some chains have overlapping materials that they share between two different chains. We're also going to talk a little bit about the cost versus the uh, output as well as the income that they provide to the citizens. We're not going to get into it too much. It's a very complicated topic, but we're going to touch on it a little bit. We're also going to look at the wiki and talk about the wiki and go over production chains and the spreadsheets on there and how that info was shown and how it's described and how to read what you're seeing on the wiki. We're also going to talk about calculators and we're going to talk about production boost and alteration items. So a disclaimer before I get started. This video is going to assume that you want to make everything yourself, that you are not going to buy any goods or any raw materials or any finished products from any of the AIs on the map, or you're going to use any of the specialists that can provide free items. Items like Mr. Garrick, who is an epic uh, card slot or an epic card, can provide free jewelry and pocket watches to engineers and investors within the radius of the, the town hall that he's equipped in. So items like him, I am not going to, I'm not going to go over. I'm, I'm going to assume that you're not going to use them. You, I, you can use them. There's nothing wrong with using them. They're great for offsetting the need for a lot of production. But this video is going to assume that you are going to make all goods yourself. You're going to need to produce all of this stuff yourself. So keep that in mind while watching this video and don't be sitting there yelling at the screen. Oh, but you can go and buy ore from Eli or you can go and buy cigars from Kahina and you don't need to do this. You can use this and that. I know all of that. That is a that is a whole other topic, a whole other video I can make on specialist items and how useful they are. This video is specifically for production chains, how they work, what's going on with them. So that's just a little disclaimer. So to get started, what is a production chain? Well, very simple. Production chain is what you see down here in the bottom, and it has these little arrows between them. Basic production chains like the timber are wood into timber. Uh, work clothes are sheep farms which produce wool and go into framework knitters. Some things get a little more complicated, such as the steam motors under engineers, which takes iron and coal to make steel, and zinc and copper to make brass, and those two things are going to a motor assembly line to make steam motors. Investors have, a, have one later on that I haven't unlocked yet called the steam carriage, which gets even more complicated. It's, a, it's quite a large chain, so you can see how these chains can branch out. What this thing, what these are down here are showing you is what it takes to make the final product. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to build that entire, that entire setup right there every time you need one of these buildings though. That is, that is not what this is telling you. This is just telling you what it needs to make the final product. So keep that in mind when you get ready to build these chains. And we're going to touch on that just a little bit more. Uh, here in just a few minutes. I just kind of wanted to go over and show you what these different chains are. There's lots of different production chains. They unlock as you level up your tiers of your citizens and get higher. So like I have everything for farmers, workers, artisans, and engineers. Investors, I need 3,000 investors to unlock gramophones. I can't build them just yet. Some stuff requires the things in the new world. Chocolate, for instance, for example, from for the investors, can only be made in the new world. And it requires a certain number of new world residents in order to unlock that actual building. So you do have to level up both the old world and the new world and get citizens in both areas in order to unlock everything you need to build those different items. So that is something to keep in mind, when you, especially once you get up to uh, investors. The stuff for like engineers and artisans, you'll get that stuff pretty early on, and it's real easy to unlock. Investors is where it starts getting more complicated, because you need a lot of obreros to unlock. Stuff for like the cigar manufacturing, the chocolate manufacturing. 
uh, and so on from there. So keep that in mind when you're building your stuff that you need to be upgrading both the old world and the new world. So while you're building these production chains, you're going to notice that your citizens have the needs for them under both needs and happiness. So there are both uh, needs for advancement and to get more citizens and your luxury needs, which improve your happiness. Uh, any goods, any produced goods give you coins as well as extra people. So as you can see right here, for artisans, you get 15 coins for having a supply of sewing machines. But you don't get any coins for having a university. Same with fur coats, you get 22 coins for having fur coats, but you don't get anything for having a school. Happiness is is kind of the same, except it's it doesn't really make much rhyme or reason as what, what gives you money or not. A variety theater gives you happiness and coins, but a church only gives you happiness. Beer and rum give you happiness and coins as well. So anytime you build a production chain, it's going to cost you income. However, you do get some of that income back with coins that you get for supplying them with that new uh, goods, whether it be uh, just a regular basic needs or a luxury goods you will get money back now there is a to try to put it simply without getting too complicated on it at first you will lose a little money on a chain especially these larger chains like the rum and beer stuff like that you will lose a little bit of money until you have enough people to counter the cost of it so be aware that when you first produce a chain, you probably will lose a little bit of money. Eventually, though, you will have enough people to where it will counter the cost of that chain and you'll have enough money. And it will be a balance for you and it will balance itself out. I'm not going to get into the specifics on how much it takes and how many residents it takes because that gets very complicated and it can be a little abstract because there's a lot of hidden incomes there's a lot of income modifiers based on your difficulty level and lots of different stuff like that so just be aware that when you do build a production chain it's going to cost you money but you will get some of that you will start making that back from your citizens for supplying them with those goods and everything so just keep that in mind now, the biggest thing that I have been noticing for the past couple of weeks, talking to people on Facebook, Reddit, uh, Discord, and other areas, talking in PMs, DMs, whatever ends, is that people are have struggling, especially once they hit Artisan, that they're really struggling to maintain their economy. They start building canneries, and all of a sudden they're going broke. They're building sewing machines, and they're going broke trying to build them. And I have been struggling so hard to figure out why. Why are they going broke? What is causing this? And I think I finally have figured it out. And it is because they are misinterpreting the data that is on the wiki. So let's move over to the wiki here and take a look at it and see what's going on. So on the wiki, this is the production chains tab. And as you can see here, it shows you a breakdown of how many of a build how how many buildings you need to maintain a balance. One lumberjack hut to one sawmill, one potato farm to one distillery, one clay pit to two brick factories, a pig farm to a slaughterhouse, and then we start getting down into things like, you know, grain farms with the bakeries, uh, steel beams. And that's where I think people start running into a little bit of problems. They see this right here, that they need to build two grain farms, one flour mill, and two bakeries, and they build that. That's not what you have to have. What you're looking at right here is the grain farm to the bakery is a two to one to two, which means if you break it, if you break it down to its basic unit of one, it's a one, one, and one. To start out, you only need, once you have workers, you only need one bakery. Unless you all you know, have 2,200 workers all of a sudden and you need two bakeries, you only need one bakery. Now, once you get up to artisans, artisans actually do take uh, double. Artisans, cons uh, the next tier up from whatever 
resource you're using uses double what's below it. So once you get artisans, you are, you're going to need more bakeries. But up to 2,200 workers, or actually maybe say, let's say 1,100 workers. 1,100 workers, you only need one bakery. And then once you pass that, then you can add and add another grain farm and add another bakery to see how that works. You don't have to build this entire chain as it is shown on the wiki. Steel beams is one that I know that a lot of people have struggled with because it shows that the chain is one iron mine, two kilns, two furnaces, to three steel works, and it costs 890. Early game, that is a lot of money. That's a lot of income. You don't have to build that. Again, break it down into its basic. If we only want one steel work, then we're only going to need one furnace, one iron mine, and one kiln. See how that works? Go backwards, break it down to its basic a uh, basic single factory for the end product, what do you need? One, 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 and one. You don't need the entire chain. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. Your weapon factory, you can have six weapon factories. Four, two furnaces, one mine, and one kiln. You know what else could be replaced right there? Instead of having uh, the entire chain, or you could just add one weapon factory for, and still use the same uh, one furnace. Because that's going to be six. That takes three for full two. If you break it down to one, you're only using 50%, basically. These are rounded up a little bit. So that's only 50% of that furnace. The other 50% go to one weapon factory. So you don't need to build this entire chain right here again just for a weapon factory. You already have enough steel being pumped out from a furnace to supply both a weapon factory and a steel works. So you have to start looking at your timers on stuff and breaking things down to seeing how much you actually need. And this goes for the rest of the production chain section on the wiki. Things like windows makers. You only need one window maker. You don't need to build four and have two glass makers and two sand mines. You only need one window maker for quite a while. That's going to supply a lot of windows, actually. And you only need one. And you only need one glass and one sand and one lumberjack cut. And you're done. Um, if you want to make two window makers, that's fine. You still only need one glass and one, sun and one sand mine. If you break these down into one and divide it by divided by two basically, then one, one, and two. So you still can get two window makers for one mine and one glass maker. And I could just keep going through here. Uh, canneries, sewing machines. These are the two I think people are really struggling with is they're trying to build all of this at the beginning and look how much this costs for a, this full now this is a fully optimized chain based on its lowest common denominator which is the iron mine iron mine produces it every 15 seconds so to get a full chain for how much iron you can get that's how much it would take but you don't have to build all that at first you only need to build one cannery Really, you could build one cannery, one kitchen, one farm, one red pepper, one iron mine, and you're good for a while. You can add on another. Uh, you can add on another kitchen and cattle farm and pepper as you start seeing that you need more canner, uh, more canned foods. So as you go down through here, keep that in mind while you're looking at this wiki that you don't have to build all of this. There was a thread on Reddit the other day where someone was talking about um, how in the world am I supposed to keep up. Uh, build enough gold mines. They're like, I'm, I, I need jewelers, and it, the wiki's telling me I need 10 gold mines for jewelers and for, uh, where else was that? It was, uh, oh, here, pocket watches. They're like, I need 20 gold mines? No, 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 you don't. That's for three clock makers. You don't need three clock makers. Look how many, three clock makers supplies up to 20,000 engineers. You do not need that at all. I have one clockmaker, and it's supplying quite a large city in Crown Falls. It's it's fine. Yeah, so break down the wiki. Don't look at it as a, oh my gosh, I need all of that. Think of it in terms of one final building, okay? That's where you have to look at it. Is your final building, break it down to one, go backwards from there, okay? I hope that makes a little bit of sense. 
Um, let's see. And this course does go to the New World as well. Everything in the New World is the same. You only have to think about it in terms of ones. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Break things down. Don't build what's shown on the wiki for multiple end unit factories. Only build the one and then go backwards from there and figure out what you need, okay? I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Let's jump back over into game real quick here. And I'll kind of show you on this as well how some of those timers and stuff work. So let's say for jewelers, uh, the, jewel, the jeweler produces every 30 seconds. The goldsmith is every one minute. The gold mine is two minutes and 30 seconds. And the coal mine is 15 seconds. And a pearl farm is one minute, 30 seconds. So once you get into doing that, you're going to need, I believe, this looks like it's going to take two goldsmiths. Yeah, two goldsmiths, I believe four gold mines. So four gold mines, one coal mine, two goldsmiths, and one jeweler. And I think one pearl farm. Yeah, one pearl farm. That's all you've got to build. That's all you've got to build. You don't have to build what's on the wiki showing ten gold mines. That's that's insane. That is a little that's a little intense. So yeah. Break things down and don't overbuild. Overbuilding is what's causing a lot of people to lose a lot of money. They're building too much too fast and they not realizing that they're building too much. And a lot, one of the uh, mindsets that they're, that they're thinking is they're seeing something like, okay, let's look and see my schnapps right here. See, it's only at half. They see that and they panic because it's not filled up. Here is a trick that you need to learn and it's probably going to blow your mind once I tell you. You don't need 400 grain in stock. I do because I'm overproducing grain at the moment because I my my balance is a little off. But you don't need that as long as you have one unit of a good in your storage. And it never goes to zero or if it does go to zero if as soon as it immediately comes back up to one. You have achieved balance. Technically, keeping one in stock is keeping a perfect balance. One ton at all times, never fluctuate, never going below that to zero, is maintaining a perfect balance. You do not have to overbuild um, everything. I see a lot of people build, like farmers, I see a lot of people building 10 fisheries all over the place when they're starting out that is wholly unnecessary this city right here of stockfisk has 860 farmers and 1978 workers i have three fisheries and my fish is full just about i'm at 395 out of 400 you don't need 10 fisheries watch your stocks don't overbuild only build when you see it really dra drastically going down like i can tell right now that i'm going to need more coal because i'm running low on coal at the moment uh that down arrow does mean that it's decreasing if it's ever decreasing more than minus one then you probably need to build one more of the of the building you don't need to build like 10 of them you need to build one if you see it decreasing by more than minus one that's all you've got to do doesn't need to go any more than that if you've achieved something that says stable or rising by however many then you're fine you don't need to build anything else don't overbuild and stress out your economy it's not necessary okay what is all this I don't, I don't, leave me alone nate i'm doing a guide video sorry i saw it saw an item i was like ooh, something i don't have something i don't need anyways um so the next thing i want to talk about is going to be how to really manage your economy correctly and how to maintain optimized and efficient production chains and that is through the use of calculators i have two calculators i'm going to discuss here the first one is the one i use personally and the other one is one that you can use based on there's a specific thing that it does that no other calculator does do that I like. So this one right here is one on uh, deathwingstudios.com. 
Uh, links to these will be in the description below. You can also find a you can also find them on the Anno 1800 wiki by going to going to the wiki. I thought I had it pulled up, but I didn't. You go here and it's under uh, it's under guides. Okay, good. Technical. It's under technical. Under technical, you can go to the uh, needs calculator overview, and you can find all sorts of different calculators. But the two I'm going to talk about, like I said, this is the one I prefer, and then there's another one that has a one extra functionality that is nice, but I don't use it. So the DeathwingStudios.com one is done in Unity. I really like this because you can have separate, you can create different islands over here, and you can see your uh, productions for each island. The way these calculators work is by you plug in your population numbers up here and it spits out how many buildings of each type you need and then you can adjust the production values of them in this uh, section right here where you can click and change these numbers so say I have my schnapps were at 200% production boost then I would type in 200% and it would change that number the number this down here below it where it says capacity that is how close you are to needing another building once it hits a hundred capacity you need to build a new one as you can see right here my bread is at 95 that means i probably should think about building another uh, another bakery and a, another chain to start another bakery right there because i'm almost at capacity for it you can go under construction materials and put in how many of each of these buildings right here you have and then it will tell you everything it tells you your raw materials you need your agricultural materials you'll need and the intermediate products which are the in-betweens that you need to be make, to be making it, they are highly useful i recommend them to novice players and even veterans because it does help keep keep you from overbuilding if you are someone who is struggling with a, a crappy economy, you're in the hole, you can't, and you can't figure out why, you think you've overbuilt but you're not sure, use a calculator. Plug in your population numbers, see, and plug in your population numbers and put in your, you know, your production values. If you have electricity, a lot of your production buildings are going to be at 200%. Actually, all of them are. All consumer good buildings can be boosted with electricity, except the ones in the new world. So, coffee, rum, uh, scars, chocolate cannot be boosted with electricity. They have to be boosted through specialists. Everything else is built in the old world, and it can all be boosted to at least 200% with electricity. So, modify those and see what it spits back, and then go through your city and see how many that you need to get rid of. If you aren't aware of this, you can actually go and see how many you have on the island. So you can see right here, I have three fisheries on this island. I have three schnapps. I have three potato farms. It tells you how many you have on that particular island. So make sure you go through and check to see how many buildings you have compared to what you need. And that will help you to start balancing everything out. The other calculator is right here. It's on GitHub by uh, Nahol, or however you say his name. Oh, probably just butchered that. It is not as detailed. It doesn't tell you the capacity that you're almost at or anything like that, and you cannot do multiple islands, so I don't use it. The only reason I'm going to say, going to talk about this is under this uh, triple gear icon, let you put in the specialists that change up how. Uh, goods are produced. Uh, for exa example, the fur coat factory has a specialist you can find that removes the need for cotton fabric and lets you use wool instead. There's a legendary version that takes out the fur and the cotton fabric altogether and replaces it with iron ore and wool. So this lets you put those in and it is very nice but I don't like this particular calculator because I can't see the capacity and I can't create multiple islands. So that is why I don't use that. I use this one right here and if I have specialists that let me change up the production inputs, then I just go in and I figure out myself based on the timers how many of those I need. So speaking of those, let's segue into uh, specialists and alteration mechanics. So I'm going to show you one right here. 
This is my trade unit I have over on this island, Stockfish, that has two specialists in it. One is the costume designer that replaces input for cotton fabric. It processes wool. That is for the fur dealer. So now I just need wool and fur coat and furs to produce fur coats. That cuts out the production for cotton fabric altogether from this particular building right here. So I don't have to worry about it. The other one I have right here is Chef Michael. This is one that a lot of people love to get because it takes out a huge production chain. Instead of goulash, the building processes pigs in the cannery. So if you remember the cannery, you know, it's got it's got a decent little chain. You need beef, red peppers to make uh, to go to an artisanal kitchen to make goulash to go here. This takes out all three of those and replaces it simply with pigs. Uh, alteration uh, specialists are very, very powerful. Some people almost see them as cheating because it makes things very simple. So it's up to you to decide if you want to use them or not. If you're interested in changing up your production value, production needs and cutting out some stuff that you don't want to make anymore, go hunt for these guys. You can get most all of the specialists from Eli. You can also get really good ones from rescue missions, uh, rescue ex expeditions. And you can also get a few from uh, Isabella Sarmento in the New World. That's where you're going to get the most all of your different specialists from, is those people. You also can get them from quests, and you get them from the public mooring, which you put on your island, and you'll get special visitors on occasion. To get more special visitors, you need to increase the attractiveness of your island. Now, the most common types of specialists are the ones that change the production percentage. So we're going to run way over here to my pig area. And you can see right here, I have two up here. These are the kind of specialists I really like, the ones that affect an entire chain. This delicatesser affects slaughterhouses and pig farms. That's the entire chain, and it produces it by 20%. It increases it by 20%. I also have a soap maker. This affects the entire soap industry, and it increases it by an additional by 20%. I really like these because of the fact that if you increase the production value of a end good, so like your slaughterhouses or your soap factory, you need to increase the entire uh, previous chains to compensate for that increase in production. If your slaughterhouses are working at 120%, your pig farms need to be at 120%. If your rendering works are at 120%, your pig farms need to be at 120%, but your soap factory doesn't have to be at 120%. It can still be at 100 that just means you're going to be making more tallow than you're using, so you're going to stockpile tallow now. So you have to do that for everything, and every production chain requires that. If you, make, if you are producing more of the end good, you need more of the previous good to compensate for that. So keep that in mind. And I mentioned electricity earlier, and if you're not aware, electricity comes up in engineers and you need oil for that and it increases the production value of all buildings that it gets electricity by a hundred percent and you can see the different production increase if you hover over the gear icon it will show you so this beer factory right here has a productivity increase of plus 50 percent and it's supplied with electricity so it gets plus a hundred percent so this beer factory, or this brewery rather, beer factory, that's a new one, is working at 250%. That means that my hops and my malt also need to be working at at least 250% to keep up with that beer production. So keep that in mind. Electricity is great. It means you need fewer, build, fewer manufacturing buildings and everything, but it means you need more raw goods. Uh, farms and pit and animal farms and fisheries and timber are not affected by electricity. Electricity does not make them work any faster, so keep that in mind. Farms, animal farms, fisheries, and timber cannot be boosted by electricity. Or can be, so your coal and iron and all that, that can be boosted. But your agriculture cannot be boosted by electricity. So just keep that in mind when you are boosting your, uh, your different industries and stuff. 
I believe that is about it. I think that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about. I know I rambled a bit. I don't really do a script for any of these kind of guide videos. I have notes. I talk about things. I try to segue into stuff as much as I can and discuss different things as best I can. Um, but if there is anything I did not cover or something I did not cover very well or you're still kind of confused on, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm happy to answer your questions and I'm very sorry if I didn't explain something very well or if I skipped over something a little too quickly and everything. Um, just let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help out and answer questions. I love this game. I'm a big fan of the Anno series. I've been playing it for almost 20 years now. So I'm very, very happy to help and answer any questions you might have. Uh, just feel free to ask down below. Uh, you can check out the Anno Discord server. There's going to be a link to it in the description below. I'm also going to have links to the calculators I use below. So hopefully this video has helped you understand, you know, where your money might be going if you're going broke trying to build stuff and how to build your production chains, how they work together, and when to build stuff and when not to build stuff. So hopefully that helps a little bit. If it did, leave a like down below. Let me know that you're enjoying the video. Subscribe to my channel. I do Anno 1800 videos daily with uh, the Sunken Treasure DLC out currently, and I do plan on making more guide videos in the future. And until the next one, take care.